Hey class, so I'm going to break the intelligence lectures up into even tinier chunks uh, because I've, I've found that it's really hard to carve out uh, a full hour that's uninterrupted, well, an hour and a half that's uninterrupted for lectures. I've had more success recording these uh, in smaller chunks. So yeah, let's get started. Um, and so we're going to cover the Wexler uh, as a really popular measure. And next time, the last chunk of lectures, uh, you already have the slides, um, is for structured personality tests. But I'm going to get through the intelligence stuff first, because there's some of that on your last homework. Very broad and vague, I know. Um, so yes. Uh, let's let's just kind of plow through this, and uh, I do have some handwritten notes down here that so I'm going to be looking down a bit on occasion just to make sure that I've got everything right. Uh, I have a little bit of pandemic brain, I guess, but I think everyone does at this point. And um, yeah, so yeah, let's just get started and talk about kind of the other big intelligence tests. I mean, there are others, but like. This is a good one to know. Hence, I'm covering it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, let's just keep going. So, we've already covered the Binet and uh, the Wexler. And depending on who you ask, it's pronounced differently. I use Wexler, but others don't. Um, but we're all talking about the same test. Uh, so, the, the Wexler um, was kind of developed in response to the Binet, uh, because the Binet, the Stanford Binet, was designed for kids. And, and um, that, that was a problem. So, um, and also, as we raised last time, the original Binet gave a single score and didn't really emphasize, like, and it overemphasized um, speeded tasks as well as verbal, and those tended to be more difficult for um, for older adults, which Wexler was more interested in, and as you can see from the name, Wexler Bellevue. Bellevue is that famous um, mental, uh, or mental assign, the, it's a New York City, uh, inpatient uh, psychiatric hospital, um, uh, Bellevue. Uh, so so that's the same Bellevue that you may have heard of. But uh, so Wexler wanted to use this test and it just couldn't. Uh, so there were too many questions that emphasized like word manipulation, uh, the instructions emphasized speed instead of accuracy, and it was reliant on that concept of mental age, which is really not relevant for adults. Um, and so, yeah, and as I mentioned last time, ages ago, I know, um, once you hit the age ceiling, uh, even if you perform perfectly, you essentially had an average, at best, you had an average IQ, which is just not representative of reality. Because, you, yeah. Um, so, sorry. Um, so, yeah, to correct these kind of limitations, um, he designed his tests specifically for adults and added items uh, to balance out all those heavy verbal questions that the Binet had, and he kind of adjusted the classic IQ formula uh, from IQ equals mental age over chronological age to IQ equals attained or actual score versus expected mean score for age. And so it, instead of, so it, it was a little more empirical. Um, and the basic idea was that, um, that IQ may remain constant with normal aging, even though, um, Raw intellectual ability may shift or decline, and this this assumption is called IQ consistency, or IQ constancy. And um, yeah, it's it's a pretty well accepted view um, that this is an it is an assumption. 
uh, that IQ is invariant to age so that it doesn't, once you hit adulthood, it doesn't matter. And that's, that's the basic idea here. Um, and it's very possible we're about to have a special guest because he is lurking out of frame. Can I help you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that camera wobble, that's, that's too key. Let me at least, if he's at least in frame, he can't wobble the camera. There you go. I, I think he's, the unfortunate thing is, I think he has learned uh, that he gets treats if he annoys me enough. Um, so, so yes, but let's, let's keep going. Uh, so, yeah, the Binet had a lot of strong assumptions in the original version and Wexler wanted to rectify it. And so, and I've, I've hinted at this a little. Tuki, please. Sit. Or, well, you're already sitting. Ah, wait. Okay, sorry. Um, so it's got some advantages. As I've already kind of pointed out, I got a little ahead of myself. Uh, the age scale versus the point scale. So the Binet uh, uses uh, age. So scores are based on a basal age and ceiling age. Um, and each basal or ceiling level had a chronological age associated with items or that level. And so say a person was successful completing three out of four items at the third, at the six, age six level. Fine. Oh my goodness, Kat, you're the worst. I mean, he's not, but like, oh, sorry. Um, so yeah. And so a person who's successful at age completing like three quarters of the items at age six would have a basal mental age of age six. And so that's great for kids. That's a lot of time spent working on kids, but, but people are adults. Tuki, I'm, you, you ate them all, but people are adults for most of their lives. And so 37 Binet uses that age scale. It contains items for each level. So the at each level of age, so the scale could vary tremendously. Um, and so it had a lot of stuff in it for every given age. However, um, that doesn't really help with adults. And so the Wexler Bellevue used a point scale. And so items were items in a scale answered correctly were given a certain number of points. And so essentially you earned your IQ points and it, it allowed for more kind of homogenous content. Tookie. Mm, it's like a shark circling. Uh, but, but the idea here is uh, that you could tailor to all adults instead of just repurposing a kid's test for adults. And there's actually been a lot of success in doing the opposite too. And we'll get the, I don't know if we'll, I, it, it's unlikely we'll get there realistically. Um, and so many of you may have taken kind of the SAT or the ACT early through a gifted program. I, I did. Um, and they, so they essentially gave you a test for adults or for, well, high school seniors when you're like 10 or 12. And the idea there was to allow you to get kind of a better assessment. And so it's, it's easier, or at least it's there. So uh, that all the gifted kids who were just topping out on the top of the like standard age test could perform at their ability. And so then you would actually have some, so like kids would range from, you know, um, average or well, the entire range, but you would get all that range among the top, like one in, hundred kids instead of them all being smushed at the top. And so there is advantage of using out of age scales, but typically it's putting younger folks into older scales rather than older folks and kind of smushing them back into younger scales, if that makes sense. But regardless, um, the point scales allowed for content that was kind of consistent across age homogenous, meaning same. It's kind of the flip side is like heterogeneous, uh, which is like, there's lots of different types and with homogenous, uh, 
it's it's consistent. It's it's typically what we want in a scale so that we can interpret the scores. So the 1939 Wechsler Bellevue used the point scale. Again, it allowed for homogeneous content. Uh, the Wechsler could attain scores for an individual in a wide range of content areas, and these were vocab, creative, creativity, thinking, judgment, and general knowledge. And these all tapped into a general construct of IQ. Excuse me. Uh, without um, having to deal with the age component. So then it could focus on different aspects. So a lot of advantages. Also, uh, for those of you who may have forgotten, the all these glorious icons are the Microsoft defaults. Um, and so enjoy that machine learning gift. Um, but yeah, so the Wexler Bellevue included a performance scale. Um, it and it addressed so it tried to address the over reliance on verbal that had been an issue with the Binet, and so the Wexler added a second entire scale of nonverbal measures. It it did a lot to address the shortcomings of Binet. And so here's kind of a basic little evolution. Um, I focused on the third revision here. There is a fourth that I, I have a lot of notes on, and but but for those of you that don't have the textbook, um, and actually those of you who do, the the book is current up through the third revision. The idea is basically the same. They just updated and improved it, and so um, the but jumping back, the Bellevue sample had a had a white New Yorker normative sample, um, kind of in contrast to Binet's very tiny sample of, I think it was approximately 50. Check check the slides. Uh, whatever the slides say is is what it is. Um, and so it it had a larger normed reference group, and it used that norm to like anchor the scale. So the expected number correct is what it was. That that's that expected. Uh, score by age was based on that norm sample. So that was kind of the anchor here. Now there have been, as I mentioned, revisions, the 1955 revision, the 1981 revision, the 97 revision, and I have it written down here somewhere. Somewhere. Maybe. Apparently I have was not kind to myself and wrote down, did not write down the original year of the fourth edition. Anyway, the fourth edition happened after 1997, which is coincidentally the last the year our book was last published and uh, the year that um, yeah the the year that the like full revision came out. Cool. So there are other test versions of the Wexler. There is one for children, the WISC, uh, which is age 6 to 16. It was originally developed as a downward extension of the Wexler adult scale in 49. So instead of what Binet did was essentially like scale up. So it started with kids and scaled up. Wexler started with adults and scaled down. And there have been revisions of this. There's a 79. Um, or 74, I cannot read, of the WISC revised, and there's a third, there was a third edition in 91, uh, the most current version, as far as I am aware, is from 2003, uh, as I mentioned before, there's big gaps between these revisions, because they have to collect data, they have to see where the literature goes, and just improve, and that takes time, and good skill development I personally think is worth the wait, but um, to each their own. Cool. So the other test versions, there's a Wexler preschool and primary scale. Uh, so even younger, so age two to seven and a quarter. This was developed in 67 as kind of a descendant of the Waze and the Whisk. Uh, so it scaled down 
from the kids version and the current version um like it it's been revised uh pr provides subtests and composite scores that re represent intellectual functioning in verbal and performance cognitive domains as well as a composite score that supposed to represent a kid's general ability so full scale iq that's the basic idea and so it's kind of age modulared um and last this is uh so the way the WASI um, is developed in 97 to go along with the WACE. It's short. It's a short test. It's the Wexler abbreviated scale of intelligence. Um, some of these are backronyms, um, but it's short. Uh, it was fairly recently released to allow clinicians to form a validated estimate of verbal performance in full, full scale IQ in a short amount of time. Uh, it uses vocab. Uh, similarities block design matrix reasoning similar to those on the waist uh, to provide an estimated full scale IQ in about 30 minutes. So it was it's it's not as precise. So it has a wider um, standard error of measurement, but it's fast. And so if and so while like the full scale test can take forever, um, you can get in a lot more shorter versions and get at least a basic idea. Okay, so that's the first chunk. I'm gonna render them, upload them, and keep going, just so that um, you will have this content up. Um, and hopefully these, I know these are, they're pretty dense, um, but hopefully, because you can download them or pause them, rewind them, uh, you can kind of take breaks. Um, my challenge is I've got to like cram it all in. Okay, enough about me. Um, I'm going to upload these. I'll see you. Well, you'll see me in a little bit.